Well, President Rouhani's speech has generated a lot of reaction on social media. When he went to the podium to speak, more than 30 Farsi tweets using the hashtag RouhaniUNGA were posted every single minute. Let's take you across to Karen, who's in the world's newsroom. Karen, just give us a sense up there what the reaction was, what was being said on social media. Well, we're in the perfect place to get reaction, Lucy, because we're actually in the BBC Persian newsroom, and uh, this is the studio just behind me. Uh, they're off air at the moment, uh, but their headlines are coming back in just a few minutes. So we've got a little while to talk about reaction and, and the sort of things that we're hearing. I'll just take you through uh, something called a, uh, a word cloud that uh, you may be familiar with, but if you aren't, this is what it looks like. Uh, just comparing the speech with, uh, the, of, of Rouhani uh, with that of uh, the President Ahmadinejad back in 2005. Now, uh, this is what... Uh, Mahmoud Ahmadinejad's speech looked like if, if you have a, a word cloud made of it. The word nuclear features very, very prominently indeed. Let's take it back up to yesterday evening and Hassan Rouhani, the new president of Iran. This is his word cloud. Its main features are the word Iran, the word human, world and violence. So a very different uh, nuance to his whole speech. But uh, let's get the reaction of uh, one person who's very familiar with the, uh, this newsroom, Pune Kaduzi of BBC Persian, your presenter and reporter, and uh, Mustafa Sano, who's uh, from BBC Arabic. Uh, Mustafa, we'll talk about the Arabic reaction in just a second. But Pune, uh, what sort of things have been said in the Iranian media? Well, the speech was very late at night in Iranian time, but many people were st staying up and watching, and they were tweeting and Facebooking live throughout the whole speech because the whole nation had their hopes up. They were all very excited. What they called a charm offensive and what they called cautious optimism was really bubbling uh, among the people. Um, however, some of the newspaper headlines were a little bit later to catch up on that because it was too late probably to get the words or the pictures to the first pages. Most of the newspapers of Iran actually had Mr. Obama's speech on their first pages. I don't know if it was partly intentional or partly just the another sign of goodwill towards the talks, but there were um, hopes for diplomacy, dialogue, images of Rouhani and Obama together, obviously a montage, because that visit didn't really happen. But uh, newspapers were all very excited about it as well, did that... depending with whether it was the conservative point of view or the reformists. Right, and how, how did that compare to social media? Social media was very different. Western media got really excited about the speech of Mr. Rouhani. The tone was very different, as you saw and mentioned, with Mr. Ahmadinejad's. But I think the Iranian audiences, especially the younger, more tech-savvy, who are on social media, either they had gotten their hopes up a little bit too much, unrealistically, or the speech was not up to their level of expectations. We're just so looking at some of the tweets. So we will give you some examples. For example, Salman has tweeted, Rouhani's tone was great and he spoke with confidence. He saved Iran's dignity. However, Mahsa on Facebook has written, I'm just glad people didn't leave their seats or throw tomatoes at our president this time. Audience even applauded at the end. And someone named Irani wrote on Facebook, the first part of his speech was incomprehensible and the second part was very meaningful. Mediocre. His words did not fulfill my expectations as an Iranian at all. Uh, that was very much the tone. There were sarcastic jokes about it. There were comments that the first part was for domestic consumption, feeding to the conservative demands inside the country. And the second part, which was more hopeful and more talk of peace, was designed for outside consumption and for more talks or hopeful talks with the West. Well, it's not just BBC Persian service that is really interested in this story. Mustafa Hamo from BBC Arabic. You're preparing, Mustafa, a programme going out on Friday called Talking Point, a sort of World Have Your Say equivalent in Arabic, on this very issue. Uh, on Friday, we're planning to broadcast a programme, talk, Talking Point, to be uh, concentrating on the prospects of the success of the dialogue between West and Iran after the sp speech of Mr. Rouhani at the UN uh, Assembly. But all Iranian issues are of high, of high uh, attraction for the, our, our audience because Iran is a big regional player in a lot of Middle East files, like Iraq, Syria, Lebanon. And also this has unfortunately something to do with the sectarian tension between Shia and Sunnis and in, this, in the area. Uh, so if the new tone of Mr. Rouhani which is completely different from the confrontational tone of Ahmadinejad, is succeed to convince, convince at least a wider Arab public. I think we are all in on the verge of a new chapter in the Middle East. 
Mustafa, thank you very much. Pune, thank you very much. And we'll let BBC Persian get back to their normal broadcasting from uh, the studio of BBC Persia. Uh, back to you, Lucy. Karen, great to see you. Thanks to everyone up there as well.